This this whole thing wasn't intended to be a video about changing your race with stable diffusion, but but I found that this was just so much more fun to play around with than the original thing that I was going to do in my video. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. I don't know. I don't even know why it's. I mean, it feels almost weird to be like to open up the stable diffusion program and be like, "Haha, make me black." <laughs> but, but it's just so. I don't know. It's not even. It's not even changing the race. I mean, it's just. I like this little ghost of a person in the background going, "Huh? I wonder if it can make me a woman." The way that a diffusion model works is, if you think about any picture, you can slowly diffuse it into just random noise, right? So in that same vein, you should be able to diffuse it backwards if you know what you're doing. So that is the model of an AI image generator like this. It is basically a set of instructions on, okay, if you want to make an image that looks like an apple, start with random noise, and then here's what you kind of have to change in what orders to make it look like an apple from random noise. So the difference with image to image in stable diffusion is rather than starting with random noise, you're starting with one picture, introducing some noise into it so that there is an element of randomness, and then you're working backwards from there. So that's why, I mean, they're, they're both really fun to work with. I, I think everything about this is, is fascinating. To get, a, to get a good example of the sampling steps, if I do, I was doing strawberry earlier. So this is the text to image function. And if I set the sampling steps all the way down to 10, which is fairly low, you can see that we'll get a strawberry that's kind of ugly looking. It's a little bit blurry. If we do one sampling step, it looks even worse. That doesn't even look like a strawberry. It's just random noise, right? It, it, the model knows that there should be red and green. You know, it knows that there should be some red and green in there somewhere, but it just doesn't quite get it right. It doesn't have enough steps, you know, versus if I put in 150 sampling steps, what you're going to see when this finally finishes generating, it does take a long time to finish generating, but you've got these really beautiful, crisp strawberries. They've got reflections on the edges. You know, everything is much more detailed. So you can see the difference right there. That's sampling steps. So now in image to image, if I, let's set the sampling steps to sort of a middle ground, and I'm going to set in the prompt here, black person. So I'm going to set my denoising strength may be kind of low. We'll start with something low first. And you'll see that it's going to generate an image that doesn't look like a black person at all. In fact, somehow I look more white in this picture. So that's a function of, of two things. The sampling steps isn't quite as relevant here because you're already starting with a finished picture. You're not going to get that much better. The denoising strength, however, that's the amount of, I don't know if I mentioned this already or not because I'm, I'm getting too excited and worked up, but the denoising strength is the amount of randomness that you're going to allow to, to be introduced. So if I crank this all the way to one and say, hey, generate a black person, you're going to see it, it generates something that's completely irrelevant to the first picture that I put in there. If you put the denoising strength at one, it has complete freedom to do whatever it wants. Now, conversely, if I put the denoising strength at zero, you're going to end up with the exact same picture, pretty much. It might be slightly different, but there's a very limited amount of noise. There's, there's almost nothing that can be changed, right? So additionally, one way that you can sort of force it to do better, and, and this is why I think the CFG scale is sort of the least important of these three settings that you're gonna wanna change, the CFG scale is how hard the model will try to follow your instructions based on the prompts, not the settings, right? The settings are going to be the settings regardless, but it's going to be how much the model listens to your prompts, how much it tries to make it like the things that you prompted it to make. So you can see as I crank this up, I mean, the features get sort of distorted. Let me, let me change races here. Let's try Asian. You can see that the features get sort of distorted, and that's because, <laughs> that one's kind of horrifying. It's because it's trying so hard. It's saying, okay, we, we've got to make an Asian. You know, we've, we've got to do our best here to make this picture into, a, into an Asian person. And so you get sort of these, these uh, ungodly results. But you can see if I, if I turn the CFG scale down, raise the sampling steps, and, and allow it a little bit more freedom to generate noise, you're going to end up with a picture that looks a lot more, I mean, it's having a hard time with my bright red hair. But, uh, you know, you get something that's a, a lot more palatable, let's say. So you can see that now that I've raised the, the denoising strength up to a certain level, you could see the shirt stayed the same, the background, this line of the gutter or, or the door frame or whatever that is kind of kind of stayed the same. You know, it's very interesting to generate these pictures that are almost like the original picture, but just in a different setting or, or with slight changes, you know, it makes it pretty interesting. See, that's freaky. And the thing is they work, okay, not freaky, but it's, it's, why did it make me old? Hold on. <laughs> of all of the things, as if making me a woman wasn't bad enough. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm in such a goofy mood right now. Oh man. Okay, let's put let's take old out of out of the uh, or let's put it in the negative prompts. I love that on the very first round. That's the first thing that it did was it made me old. This one's old too. I put old. In the... 
I'm just an old, I'm an old person living in a young person's body, man. Why are they all old? Do I look that old? That's a younger picture of me, too. I'm like 22 in this picture. Old 2.0. Alright, let's see you make me old now. Am I... <laughs> Why is it getting older? Old 3.0, let's go. You wanna play? That just gave up on the woman part. That just still looks like a man. Okay, old 3.0. Young woman. How about that? Maybe we'll we'll do positive re-encouragement to the AI. We'll make me a young woman. I'm not hot. I'll say that first of all. I don't make a hot woman. What if I do what if I do hot young woman? <laughs> Okay, I'll take this. this. Boy, this is really just Christopher's Christopher's Factory, the narcissism episode. This is Christopher's Factory, make me a minority episode. I think we need more. I think we need more denoising strength if it wants to make me an Eskimo. I like that it's putting snow on my nose already. I already that already looks a lot more Aleutian. Is that how you say that? Eskimo. Parka, North Pole. See, the problem is if you want to do something that's that's too dissimilar from your original picture, you need to add denoising strength so that it has the room to make something different. But then by adding denoising strength, you also, you change the picture so much that it might not look, like this doesn't look anything like me. Hood? Hooded. Actually, I wonder if I if I put North Pole, I wonder if it'll pull samples from pictures of like kids at like the North Pole at the mall or something. Okay, yeah. See, this one I, I cranked up the denoising strength so much that the only thing that it kept about me was this little orange tuft of hair that's that's poking out the top there. Asian man. How about that? Nice. Let's try handsome Asian man. There we go. Oh, look at me. I'm I look like uh Simulu. Simulu. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> handsome young Asian man. See, I don't know why it's so funny. It's like it's like the equivalent of like looking at yourself in like a funhouse mirror. Where it's like, it's just you, it's just sort of, you know, distorted a little bit. But that suddenly makes it, so, like, wildly entertaining. These are fascinating. Here, okay, Ooh, I look really handsome in that one. I look really handsome in that one. 